Good evening, one and all. Myself, Piyusha Shedgar. In today's session, we'll see how to measure the frequency and attenuation of microwave signal. This is a learning outcome. At the end of this session, student will be able to measure frequency of the microwave signal and the attenuation of the microwave signal. These are the contents. So before going to start today's session, we can pause video here for a second and recall that what is the range of frequency for microwave signal. As we know that microwave signals are very high frequency signals, the microwave signals which having the range is in terms of gigahertz that is 10 raised to 9. So it will start from 1 gigahertz to thousands of gigahertz. And you know the frequency and wavelength relationship is f equal to c by lambda that is wavelength and frequency are inversely proportional to each other. Therefore, at high frequencies, you are getting the wavelength is very less value that is in terms of centimeter or microliter. So, the wavelengths which can be varied from 30 to 0.03 centimeter for the microwave signal. Therefore, these waves are called as microwaves. Now let us consider the first point measurement of the attenuation. What is attenuation? So in case of measurement of attenuation, attenuation is the ratio of input power to the output power and normally it is expressed in decibels. It is the ratio of powers therefore we can calculate the decibel value by uh, multiplying it with the tail log the ratio of power that is p in by p out. Thus attenuation can be calculated by 10 log p in by p out in decibel where p in is the input power and p out is the output power. And thus the attenuation can be measured in two ways. First method is power ratio method and the second is RF substitution method. Let us now discuss the first method power ratio method. Here in power ratio method this is the block diagram for setup one of this method. So first block is microwave source can be used to generate the signal which is given to the attenuator block. After that it is given to the frequency meter. On frequency meter we can measure directly the frequency of the signal. Again it is given to the slotted line. On the slotted line the scale is provided. By varying the slotted line section we can measure the V min and the V max that is minimum and maximum value of the voltage or a signal. Therefore crystal detector is connected to the slotted section to detect the output and which is given to the thermistor mount and again it is given to the power meter. Here whatever is the power is measured can be read directly by using power meter. Other port of this slotted line is terminated by using termination. So this is the setup number 1 for power ratio method. Now let us discuss the setup number 2 power ratio method. So in setup number 1 after frequency meter the output of this will be directly given to the slotted line. But here for the setup number 2 between the slotted line and the frequency meter one block is added that is device whose attenuation is to be measured. Now by adding this block setup 2 is formed. So here the microwave source is connected same as that of the previous one. It is given to the attenuator section. After that it is given to the frequency meter from which we can directly measure the frequency. And after that it is given to the block of the device whose attenuation is to be measured. And the output of this block is then connected to the slotted line section 
from the slotted line it is given to the crystal detector to detect the output and we can observe that output on CRO or we can measure directly that output by using power meter and the other port is connected to the termination. So, these are the steps used for the power ratio method. Initially, the input and output power is calculated without the device whose attenuation is to be measured in setup number 1. Let us consider that power as a P1 watts. In the second setup, same the input and output power can be calculated by just adding one block whose uh, attenuation has to be calculated. Let us consider that power as a P2 watts. You know that the power is measured in watts. Now, we can take the ratio of these two powers that is P1 watts and P2 watts. P1 by P2 and this is expressed in decibel. The ratio of these two powers gives the attenuation. So, we can write the attenuation equal to tail log P1 by P2 and thus we can calculate the attenuation in decibel. But the power ratio method having one drawback, here we are considering the two power calculation by using setup 1 and setup 2 and we are taking these uh, uh, powers calculation by taking the ratio of P1 by P2 for attenuation measurement. Now, this attenuation measurement corresponds to the two power positions in power ratio method. So, if you observe this figure here the square law characteristics of the crystal diode is considered. Now, here the input power versus output power the graph is shown with these two power positions for attenuation measurement. Due to this, the non-linear characteristics of the two powers will be observed and therefore, the attenuation may not be accurate particularly when the input power is low and the attenuation of the network is large. So, this uh, drawback of the power ratio method can be eliminated by using second method which is known as RF substitution method. In RF substitution method also we are using the two setup. This is the first setup in which the same block diagram is used that is microwave source which is given to the attenuator. After that it is given to the frequency meter. Here after frequency meter one block is connected, one network is connected whose attenuation is to be measured and again it is given to the slotted line and from the slotted line we can measure the power meter reading as just P. In the second setup instead of this uh, the network whose device uh, the device whose uh, attenuation is to be measured here the it is replaced by variable precision attenuator. So, we can vary this attenuation to match the previous value. So, here the microwave source and after the frequency meter it is given to the variable precision attenuator. It is given to the slotted line section and again same you are getting the uh, value of the power at the output side. This is setup number 2. So, here the output of the whole microwave bench is measured with respect to the network whose attenuation has to be calculated. Now, the output power of this is measured by just replacing the network with a precision calibrated attenuator. Thus, this attenuator is adjusted to obtain the same power as that of the previous one. Now, if you observe this method, this method having only the just single power point instead of two power point. So, the adjusted value on the attenuator gives the attenuation of the network directly. So, here uh, the drawback of the power ratio method can be eliminated by using just a single power position. Hence, this is a better procedure to measure the attenuation of the microwave signal. Now, let us consider the frequency measurement. For frequency measurement, the electronic method is used. So, it having the first block is low frequency generator which can generate the FC frequency which is given to the harmonic generator. 
so n number of harmonics frequencies are generated by using this harmonic generator and it is written as n times of fc where fc is uh, generated by the low frequency generator signal and it is given to the mixer circuit mixer is used to mix the two uh, frequencies and gives the intermediate value of the frequency so other input for the mixer is unknown frequency therefore the intermediate frequency is generated as a output for mixer circuit equal to nfc minus unknown value of the frequency so the unknown frequency is compared with the harmonics of a known lower frequency and thus by using the low frequency generator and harmonic generator and a mixer thus the unknown value of the frequency can be measured these are the references used for today's session thank you